y'all it's hope here from crafty hope and i am working on another one of my little assemblages for my 100 day project which is hashtag assemblage 100 and i decided to grab a couple of variety of different things and this top to a gift box it's like a jewelry gift box that i got for christmas and it's a pretty sturdy little box top. So I thought, hey, I'm going to try to make it into something awesome. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love, love how this comes together. So I took a piece of, I think that was some Tim Holtz scrapbook paper. Um, probably from like an old, old pad. Because I got it, yeah, I got it old <laughs> a long time ago at Hobby Lobby on clearance. And yeah, so I cut it down to size, just kind of measuring the back of it. And then I'm using some Distress Ink in Walnut Stain and a makeup, this is from the Dollar Tree, one of those makeup contour brushes and just going around the edges, starken it up. It's, it already looks a little antique -y and old, but I want to make it look even more so. So the next thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use some some other paper and I think it's in like a six by six size maybe smaller that's from Susan Lenart Kasmer it's a thinner paper that is intended to be used in like making bezels and that kind of thing for jewelry I think I also got it on clearance um oh actually before I do that I've got these two little Tim Holtz um paper dolls that I color with a couple distress crayons I'm just showing you the beginning of this that I did this because it ends up, the color doesn't really stay, ends up wiping off. So yeah, I just want to show you that I did that. So when it comes off, you'll know that that's why. Um, all right, so here's that Susan Lenart Kazmer paper that I got. And like I said, it's fairly thin and y'all, that maybe even be like five by five. It's a fairly small pad. And I only had one sheet of it. So I'm really going to do everything I can to make it stretch across this box. And I'm using just a Mod Podge to stick it to the box. So yeah, I'm yeah spreading that on there. I'm going to stick it kind of on the paper. Um, I don't think that's even straight or anything. <laughs> But I really liked this kind of ledger style on the back of it without having to use some of my ledger paper and actually using some things in my stash, which is the whole point of me doing these assemblages is using up some of the stuff I've been hoarding for ages to put into these. So I'm going to just show you a little bit of me wrapping at this box of how I'm doing it. Um, and again, I'm using the Mod Podge that's going to stick everything down. So you see I'm folding down some of the flaps. Finally got all that stuck down. I'm, you know, I've got some flaps still sticking up. I'm folding things. The folds help me realize where I need to cut things. Yeah, so you see it gets very origami here for a bit <laughs> as I do all of this and what I'm going to do is end up take some of that excess that I'm cutting off because where I placed it was not great some of that red on the inside still shows and I didn't really like that so yeah so like there I'm gonna cut little bits and pieces down to fit on the inside and I'm just measuring it out with a pencil trying to get it as best I can you see me finger tapping. That's what I do when I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm thinking. So I've moved it all over there. The problem was that that paper pad has like a hole. You see it there in it. And I was trying to keep from having that hole expose everything. All that red in there. So I have cut and pasted. Not cut and pasted. Cut this video down into little snippets so you don't have to watch me. Um do repetitive things or you know anything that's over yeah that's repetitive and things like that so and I'm just going to yeah my paintbrush is coming apart because I don't take care of them but they make for great glue brushes when they're falling apart so there I'm sticking that in there and that just about finishes this one up 
for the most part. Oh no, there's that other side. I'll end up doing that as well. And then I've got an oil pastel. It's a water soluble one. I think it's the Puerto Fino. I think it, yeah, something like that. I'll put a link if I can find them. And I'm just adding that in that edge there just in case anything is exposed or needs to show up because I did darken the edges of the paper we're putting in there. So I kind of wanted that brown in there. I'm going to do several other things to kind of get it ready. This actually prepping this box and getting all that paper parts took a lot longer than the actual assemblage of this. So after I use that, I decided to come in with this. I think that's the walnut stained distress crayon. And I put it on my nonstick craft sheet with a fairly wet paintbrush, but I dried it a little. And I'm just kind of going in the corners there and around. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to cover up some of the lines of the box. Yeah, now I'm just going to do the whole thing. So I just wanted, really, I was trying to get the edges, like those smaller edges to cover up the lines of the box covering inside where the paper didn't reach. So that's how I kind of did that. I will end up, I think, yeah, I'm going to put some Mod Podge straight in there, spread that around, and then I'll grab that piece of the Tim Holtz cardstock that I cut down and it, um, yeah, just stick that in there. So that's perfect. Um, but I think I'm going to come in a little bit once I start getting some more of my little assemblagey elements together. I do use a little bamboo ske skewer to help press those corners in, make sure they're nice and secure. And then, yeah. I decide to come in with a little bit of acrylic paint. That's like, oh, I always get the burnt umbers. Um, but it's a Master's Touch was a Hobby Lobby brand that I'm going in to have something a little more substantial than just the Distress Crayon. Something that's going to be a little more opaque. And I'm this is where I'm really just kind of putting it in the corners and I'm putting it down with a fairly fine brush and then using kind of a dry brush to drag that out just to kind of feather it out a little. And I, I think I end up doing a lot of the inside of the box and not just the corners. You see I'm dragging it further out. And like I said, this is just to kind of cover up any of the oopsies on the inside where the papers didn't reach because yeah, I used paper that wasn't big enough and I I don't know. But it was it was a good problem solving chance for me and so I hope you take that into account that if you mess something up, if it's not exactly, you know, find some way to to drag some paint in there or some other accents or aging and that kind of thing. And now I realize that not all of my papers are glued down, so yep. And I like Mod Podge because it's fairly fluid. And I can, once those papers get nice and wet, it softens the paper and it's more malleable. You can, you can futz with it a bit more. All right. So that's done. I've got some of my other elements out and here is where I'm rubbing off that distress <laughs> crayon because it just wasn't working on those girls. Um, you know, and I've seen other people color these colorizer. I've seen pictures of these just paper dolls colorized and I don't know what people are using to color them so if you have a technique for coloring coloring them let me know I'd love to know what you use so here I'm trying to figure out the arrangement of some of these little bits and pieces of things that I have I've got some cheesecloth I've also stuffed some of that cheesecloth into a little jar from the Dollar Tree I've got a spool that doesn't have anything on it several buttons and a little Tim Holtz tag that says found on it because a lot of these are just kind of found objects things that are in my stash that I'm I'm using in here especially the buttons those are those are my jam so I didn't like that spool being kind of empty and bare so I'm taking some brown embroidery floss and just wrapping it around there. I left a fairly good tail on there so that when I get to the other end, I can just tie this. I don't have to glue anything. I'll just tie the two ends together. And that adds also a little bit of a textural element there. 
I also kind of do the same thing when I combine the button and that Tim Holtz tag up at the top. And I'm going to add some buttons over on the right side later. And I kind of wish I had added the same floss on them as well. See, I'm figuring those out over there. And I wish I had added the floss in them just to pull that same color across. But it's okay. This thing is going to be adorable no matter what. So I'm pulling everything back out now that I'm like, okay, I think this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to glue the wings to, these are some also Tim Holtz wings and they're kind of an acetate. So I use the E6000 to stick everything together. There's probably a glossy accents I'm sure would work. Maybe even tacky glue or what's that stuff everybody uses? The Fabri-Tac. I don't have any of that. So I don't know if that might work. But that, you know, for me, the E6000, easy peasy. And I'm going to go ahead and glue in the little cork stopper in my jar. And I end up deciding to glue the button to that tag as well, just to make sure things aren't moving around. Oh, I also glued the tag to the, to the cheesecloth because I'm going to add a a sewn element on there and I had tried to do that but it was still far too floppy so I glued everything together I did stick my needle down in the hole to make sure nothing slid because things while the e6000 is curing it'll slide around a little bit all right so I've got my thread there prepped on my needle and like I said I'm going to leave a tail just like I did before go in there behind. I'm just, I'm doing a couple little loops of it. Nothing major. And then again, I will tie that off. I just like that textural element of like the frayed edges of the thread. And that's what's great. Embroidery floss has six strands of thread in it. So when you fray it, you've got six little fringy elements that are going on. All right. So I've tied that, trimming it down. And I think I'll trim it again. Yep, probably one more time. I'm looking at it going, that's not even. <laughs> so I'm loving this assemblage project. This one actually was like maybe the second one I did. It was early on. I've done a couple other things I've futzed about. I'm kind of ready to get back to, to doing ones like this where I'm bringing some of these things I've been saving forever together. So, yeah. But if you'll go follow me on Instagram or search Instagram for the hashtag Assemblage100, you'll find some of the things I've been doing and making. And y'all, tomorrow is the, if you're watching this on Saturday when I release this video, tomorrow, Sunday, is the 50th day for the 100 Day Project. So it's halfway through. I'm I'm just baffled at how we're halfway through. And I still have, I don't know. I both have so many ideas and I don't know where to start. <laughs> So it's just one of those things that I know I'm going to be doing more assemblage for years now because I'm this project has been giving me a little more confidence about it. And that's why I like about the 100 Day Project. It allows you to kind of play with ideas and things without, um, I don't know, having to be solid about it. It's just kind of a playful kind of thing and lets you explore a lot of different um, ways to make things or be creative. So as you see, I'm finally gluing everything down with my E6000, um, pretty much where I've laid it out. I knew I wanted those, um, the spool and the jar over on that left, and then the tag with the button and the cheesecloth up on the upper left. Anyway, I don't know if I've said left and right the right way. I do find a problem later on in this, which is this becomes very top heavy. I think partly because of that tag and a, the heavier elements are on the left side of this little box. So um, let me tell you what I'm doing here and then we'll, I'll get back to that in a second. I have a little block this is a little wood block from the Dollar Tree. They're selling these in packs of like 20 or something. And I found it was the perfect depth to push my fairies forward so that they could be at the front of the box and have that that kind of be forefront on it. And I also wanted this little assemblage of tag and everything to come forward as well. So I'm using some foam tape. I think I'm going to put a stack of two on there. 
trimming things off to make sure that that tape isn't showing from the front. But that tag is kind of heavy, so it's it kind of puts my weight off. So it took me a few days to figure out what kind of base to put on this to help uh, distribute the weight a little bit better. So you'll see here in just a little bit what I finally decided on. But there I stuck that all down with that foam tape, and then I'll use some E6000 to glue my fairies in. Or did I already have the, I don't know. Uh, they get glued in with E6000 and I make sure their feet are kind of touching the bottom as best as I can get them. Um, oh, the E6000 was popping out the top there. So I'm going to clean that out just a little bit with that bamboo skewer again. All right. I did glue my girls in somehow. I didn't get a video of that, but yeah, they're glued in there and I'm going to age the back a little bit. So this is uh, distress oxide and walnut stain that I'm putting on my non-stick craft sheet. I'm going to wet it, use my fan brush and splatter. I'm trying to get it good and wet. So I'll splatter and I'm going to make sure I do the top and this, well, yeah, the sides as well as that back. And I'm trying not to get it on my fairies or anything on the inside. So I should have done this before, but it's okay. I was anxious to to put all that stuff on the inside. I really was excited about it. So I got that to it. All right. That is distress ink. And I think the color is peeled paint. I'll try to put it below if I'm wrong. I'm not looking at it right now, but I'm going to splatter that as well. And then since those are both, um, water reactive, I'm going to add also a stamp with some stays on ink and ganache. Yeah, so I've got this stamp. It's the Tiny Toadstool stamp set. And it's got like a splatter paint stamp, which I think is great. Yeah, and I'm using that stays on and ganache. And just going to go around that as well to make sure I have something that if the crackle paint that I put on somehow uh, mars that a little too much, that I at least have some of those splatter. Yeah, but I even did a little bit on the front since there's not a whole lot of the other two on the front. <laughs> yep. So here's the Deco Art Media crackle paste that I'm using. It's super thick, super old is the reason it's super thick. So I'm going to have some trouble with it. It's going to get super clumpy. Yep. See, there's a whole piece there that just had to come out. And I can't remember if this is the last time I use it or the second to last time that I use it because I, I threw it away not long after this. Because it's just, yeah, it is a clumpy mess. And this is my fault because I've had it far too long. I've made it far too precious and didn't use it because it was, it was too important. And I've got to get over those things. Y'all, if y'all have supplies you like, use them. Don't let them go bad. I, I speak from experience because I'm really sad I had to throw this out. But I have bought new crackle paste. I got, I actually got the Ranger one to try it out. So basically I'm just going around. I do not put crackle paste on the bottom of this because I knew I wanted to add some kind of footer to it and I didn't want the crackle paste to kind of get in the way of that. So I left the crackle paste to dry because crackles do better if they air dry as opposed to heat dry. So and I'm rubbing off any of that excess crackle because like I said it was glumpy and weird. So yeah I brushed that off and then I'm going to use that distress ink and kind of, yeah, so I'm blotting it on there and I'm going to use a wet paintbrush to kind of smear it out to get into the cracks and show those. And that just helps too with some of that, that aging feel of this. All right. Like I said, I'm ha I had trouble coming up with a foot footer. Um, so what I end up using is a little odd, but it helps distribute the weight of the um the materials on the inside so i tried several different things a lot of things felt like too large and clunky and weird for this small delicate cute thing and i think what i ended up using is fine i still think it it could maybe even use something else but it's it really is okay you'll see here in a little bit so there i ended up just putting the distress uh, distress ink straight on my craft mat and wet it a little and did all that crackling 
All right, I decided I needed to extend the crackle a little bit on the front of the box. So I'm gonna apply, apply that just gently in a couple spots. And I wasn't super worried about adding the Distress Ink on it because there was Distress Ink already on the front of that that could soak into it. All right, so here's where I have the base. I have this little tin from the Dollar Tree. I think it's one of the same tins I used for my um, Compassion Hop. I'll try to put a link to that here. And then I'm grabbing these, they're little stick on pearls from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna put it around that ridge of the lid. I don't know, what do you call that section there? And I think it takes two of those, those pearl strands there that I'm gonna go around that. And then I'm gonna paint the whole thing with black gesso. I, I think, gosh, I'm trying to think. I did two coats with a big brush to get it all on there. And then I used a fine brush to kind of get in some of the cracks and crevices. So, but I'm not gonna make y'all watch me do all of that. I just painted it with some black gesso. <laughs> and like I said, about three coats of black gesso to make sure everything was coated well. And then I wanted to highlight some of the texture on it. So I'm gonna pull out, you'll see in a second, two different shades of um, brown acrylic paint. I was trying to make a color that matched the embroidery floss that's on there on the spool and tied on in those places I tied it on. So I'm going to mix this and then wipe most of it off my brush and then just kind of go around where I added those pearls. Yeah, so I'm trying real hard to get that. That embroidery floss had like a reddish tone which I think that, is that raw umber? I don't know. One of those browns had more reddish, but it had almost too much. So I added also just a brown and I don't know. So see, I'm dry brushing around where those pearls are to get the accent from them and the gesso. I'll also, I didn't plan on doing this on the top, but it just happened. It felt more natural that way for the whole thing to have this kind of brown, rusty, to it so yeah here I go over the top of it just the same way and then I'm going to come in in a second with a silvery wax and it's from artsy I don't know that you can buy that anymore I can't yeah um but I know like rub and buff and uh, metallic luck there's like several different brands um Finnebear from Prima Marketing. She has some wax paste in different colors, but that's all this is, is a wax paste. And again, a dry brush with most of this, the color and everything taken off. I had some clumps in there. I was trying to get out. Okay. So there I'm taking off most of the color and again, dry brushing over the pearls and then over the top of this. And then from there, I'm going to find the right balance with the box on that and just glue it with the E6000 and create my base. And that will be the end of this assemblage, y'all. I am glad y'all stuck in with me. Let me know if y'all felt this was either too choppy or not choppy enough that I should have cut more out of it. Um, if you like this, if you want to see more from me, I definitely have more assemblage coming because like I said, it's my 100 day project. So I have 100 days of assembling things <laughs> and it's not all this style. I'm experimenting with different styles. That's the fun of the 100 day project. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions and come back again later and see what else I've got going on. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.